Today on Out and About Art, we explore some new art openings within the county. I got a chance to make it out to some openings and reopenings of galleries and shops all around the art community. All of this coming up on Out and About Art. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. Now each month we take a look at different types of art and it can come in all shapes and sizes. It can be a paint on a canvas, a sculpture in a museum, or even trash found on the side of the road. Anything can be turned into art and Kimberly Wyant is showcasing that in her shop right here in Lakeland, Florida. She calls it crap art and spells it with a K, but don't get the wrong idea. It stands for Kimberly's Recycled Art Projects, and all of her art is repurposed from recycled materials. In addition to running her shop, she also offers classes so that her visitors can get involved in a more hands-on fashion. Take a look inside and see what she has to offer. I furnished our whole house in found objects off the side of the road, um, and I kept going even after our house was full. I started doing murals for people, and my husband thought it would be really cool if I just opened a business. So we were in Texas at the time on a job, construction job, and he bought me a little, um, like a cabana thing at an art, in an art community called Wimberley up in Texas. And um, that's sort of how crap art started. Was there, he came up with the name. He's like, hey, we should call this crap for Kimberly's Recycled Art Projects. It's perfect, we'll spell it with a K. And it was a joke to begin with, you know, but, um, it has stuck and now I'm the crap lady, so. <laughs> Originally I'm from California and I, uh, I was born and raised there. <clears throat> and in my 20s I started working in film and television. I had always wanted to work in scenic film and be a scenic artist and do sets and that kind of thing. Um, and so I joined a casting agent as an extra and just um, started talking to people that worked on the set and trying to figure out how I could get onto a set and become a crew member. Well, I told somebody on Power Rangers that I could paint anything and I could help make these costumes that I was a snow monster in the storybook adventures of um, Power Rangers and got to throw boulders at the Power Rangers. It was awesome. And um, they called me three weeks later and offered me a job uh, making, I mean, it was not money to survive on. I ended up having to quit because I couldn't afford the gas and the rent and the everything. Um, but then they hired me back two days later in a different department, um, in the props department, for money that I could afford to work for. Working in film and television, there's a huge amount of waste. And so that, that in itself was a little horrifying. And you're talking about wood, nails, stuff that, you know, I mean, that could be reused. And just seeing the things that people throw away was intense to me. That kind of started it, and so my husband kind of started scouting around, and one of my friends told me about this place. We came and looked at it, and we kept looking at it and looking at it, and finally just decided um, to go for it. Then we expanded. It was actually just the first two sections, and we didn't have the back part for yoga, which I really wanted. There was a church in there, but they outgrew the space before I even opened, and they offered me that space too. So um, now we do yoga and meditation, and we have kinder music back there, which is awesome. I love having kinder music, because we do kid art. What color do you want? Orange? Yeah, yeah. 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 Orange, silver. That one? Oh, I can't really do that. Orange, silver. One of the reasons I'm here is because kid art, the, it's being taken out of the schools, you know, they're, it's just, everything is changing. And so there's not a lot of opportunities for them to do art. Now there's other art places and there's fantastic other studios that they can go to, but I focus more on like seven and under and um, free art. Like I have a free coloring book wall. They can go paint anything they want on the wall. They can do, the projects that I have for the kids are a little bit more free form. I can give them direct instruction if they want me to give them a specific way to do something, but I try to provide them with like two or three different choices and then they can sort of paint it or glue it or you know, whatever they want to do, glitter it up. I think it gives them a, a place to just have free expression because everywhere else is really structured. So I'm just not. They love it. 
we have so much fun. And I tell you, I learned from them too. It's I have gone and done projects with kids um, and thought it was going to be something specific and they take it to a whole new level. So that's part of the joy of giving them the freedom of just giving them stuff and then letting them make what they want with it. Like I've taken bottle caps, beads, corks, and tissue paper and I had this whole idea that we were going to make magnets in the bottle caps and fill them with beads and then make tissue paper flowers for gifts. Like if you get a gift and a box has tissue paper in it, I was going to show them how to make flowers, which we did. Um, and then you can give a thank you flower out of the tissue paper that came in your gift. You're not having to buy another card. It's about recycling, right? Um, and then the corks, we painted like little mushrooms um, to go in the garden. They took and made little people from the beads and bottle caps were hats and they made little feet and the tissue paper was hair and they did all of these different things, made little animals and then they ended up making stop motion films with the little characters and then they gave me the characters. I still have them in my stuff and it's, as I bring things out of storage I'm sort of placing them around from all the kids in the community. But, um, so that's why I do things the way that I do it because it gives them an opportunity not to have to follow a direction. It gives them an opportunity to have freedom to create whatever they want and it's okay and it's the right way to do it. There's never a wrong way at crap art. This is one type of necklace you could make if you wanted to, which is awesome carols over there. These are the rings. I love to use random things. I've got little shells and different characters you can put inside if you want to make a ring. And then we have just a single cap necklace that you can make. That's another choice. Um, or anything else you want to make. I don't have any rules. <laughs> and um, so I have bottle cap jewelry actually right here. And it's these earrings. Um, and so what we do is we take bottle caps and we make them into lovely things. And they can make uh, a couple pairs of earrings, a necklace and earrings, ring, you know, they can do pretty much any type of jewelry they want. And they're not, none of them are bought bottle caps from like a store, you know, they're not, some of them have been bought, but they've been bought after they've been drank. Do you know what I mean? So again, we're focused on recycling and a lot of the beads came from other things that we use. So anyhow, it's a two hour class and we do it once a month. I probably will add another, a second class in the month um, and do it twice because um, it's fun and again, it's free form. You have the basic structure, which I will show and explain what the different parts are that we're using. And then they have the freedom to create what they want. With that, pick their colors. I've got about every color bead you can imagine. And we just have a ball. I think that we're loving our earth and our planet by recycling. Um, we're filling our soul with art when we're creating. And we're bringing joy to those around us by putting public art out there and coming together. It's we're getting to know each other. You know, it's a place where people can come together and get to know other people in the community, you know, because it's not just the same people all the time. We do have regulars that come and like to do the, the classes and stuff, but I've met more people doing this um, in the community and gotten to know more about the community because I'm here. And that's really, it's a whole, it encompasses all of that. I figure feed your mind, body, and soul. That's everything that we want to do to give people a place to come and create. I love seeing people out there utilizing the art in the parking lot. That's a huge thing for me because I feel like I want to give something back, you know? I think this is a really great community. And I also want, I think that the younger people need a place to go and have something to do. There's not a lot for them to do around here. I just want it to be sort of outside the box and, and, um, they can feel comfortable coming here and and it's okay like we're pretty open-minded around here <laughs> you can keep up with kimberly her classes and her work on facebook polk county saw yet another exciting art opening when art incubator outer space opened its doors just last month in winter haven serving as a workspace for its three resident artists as well as a gallery for their work it gives an interesting new venue to experience new art and learn about it there's plenty of opportunities for the community to get involved here, so it's definitely worth coming out and taking a look. I got to talk with the artists, check out what they had to say about the studio. Outer Space is a collaboration between Arts Ensemble, Polk Museum of Art, and Polk State College, and essentially it's an arts incubator. Um, an art incubator is basically kind of, um, no pun intended, it's like a launching pad 
for artists who um, have maybe um, proven themselves in the arts festival circuits or maybe some galleries in the Central Florida area, uh, but they're still building their resume. So we're going to give them an, another opportunity to have a gallery show and to give them more exposure. Outer Space um, really is uh, a project that's about two years in the making. Um, you know, of course, the community thinks we've been working on it for like six months or so, but uh, about two years ago, uh, the facility that we used as our primary art center in Polk County was located in Eloise in a very old, fun and funky citrus factory. We had taken over a third of it. When they sold that facility, uh, it displaced our entire arts program. The 610 Corporation here in Winter Haven donated this space and uh, spoke with Jane about maybe organizing a gallery or a studio space here. And so um, Jane approached Trent. Uh, Trent was certainly on board and then they asked me if I would be willing to come in as a, as a studio um, artist, a resident artist, but also maybe help with the curation of some of the shows as well. We began planning. Um, we began helping other artists move into the different areas that were in our resident arts program. Um, and then also planning on what the next resident arts program was going to look like, sort of the second phase of Arts Ensemble. So about 18 months to two years is, is how long this has been in the works. Technically I started with Arts Ensemble, which uh, I was looking for studio space to rent and when Jane found out that I was looking for space she offered me a space and uh, that was out at the other building and uh, she recently acquired this and, and brought me over for this. So this is really new. Uh, I came on board uh, really uh, at the beginning for my own personal uh, interests in, in art and curation and then as the process developed as outer space became to take form then we started working with Polk State College and then it also became a collaboration with the Polk Museum as well. This actually um, has sort of developed over the years. You know, Arts Ensemble is an 11-year organization at this point in Polk County. And um, the, the initial concept was to market three artists and get them well-known and, and out in the world. Um, and that lasted about six months. And, and I said, we need to open a nonprofit organization and bring in other resident artists. And we need to create working studios and, and things that are going on in other communities um, that are typically found on the coast in the state of Florida, um, but definitely are found worldwide. So this concept is, is a concept that's been going on for as long as artists have been creating beautiful works of art. We had problems naming the space because um, certainly Jane wanted to keep some sort of educational component to the title. Uh, we had to also remember that it's a studio space for, for two artists. We have to remember that it's a, a contemporary gallery. And so we tried to find a name that was somewhat universal but at the same time somewhat vague and creative. And originally it was kind of the blank space and that was a generic term for it. So when it became outer space, uh, we, we just kind of both really liked that. But then to Jane, it, her, her scope of it is much larger than the gallery because she does a lot of community work and stuff. So to us it was kind of an inside joke but to her it it really described what she wanted to do and, and a very broad aspect of what she does. The three artists that we have at Arts Ensemble's outer space uh, location um, were chosen specifically and with great intention. When we decided that we were going to open this space in Winter Haven as opposed to some other communities that we were looking at, um, what we wanted to do was bring the best of the best into one location. Um, do very modern art, do very uh, emerging artist type works um, in an area that's unrestricted. And meaning that um, our advisors are our artists here. They come together and they decide what the art shows are going to look like and what they're going to be. Um, so it keeps the artist edge to what this program is going to look like. Karen Rotana is our founding artist for Arts Ensemble. Without her, um, the 11 years worth of work that we've done um, would not be possible. Uh, Karen shows worldwide. In fact, we only get to see Karen maybe four or five times a year as she travels extensively with her husband and their business. Um, but the entire time she's creating art and sending art back to us for the shows. So having her private collection here and her private gallery here um, is really quite an honor. The additional 
additional artists are Adam Justice, um, who is very well known in our community for his work with the Polk Museum of Art, who is one of our partners. Um, we had asked Adam, even prior to establishing the partnership with Polk Museum of Art, if he would consider being one of our resident artists, sort of giving him an escape to do his own work, definitely not trying to make it more work for him, um, and he agreed. And he and Trent Manning, our third artist, um, are very close friends and, and do a lot of work hanging out, doing the art scene together, um, and Trent is extremely well known. His work um, goes unmatched anywhere in the world. He's an award-winning artist, um, brilliant guy, a lot of fun, um, and totally doesn't like to talk to the public as much as I wish he would, but which is what makes him a brilliant artist also. And we are so excited today to welcome the Outer Space Gallery here. Our ensemble are finally officially in Winter Haven. <laughs> <laughs> of all things that we do through the arts um, and also through our organization called Doors to Change, which this isn't the place to talk about that, but this makes possible the outreach that we do in youth education, really countywide. It's not just in Winter Haven. So when we're doing art in parks with children that's free, some of the fundraisers that we do at this facility are going to make those things possible. I know this is a vision come true for you <laughs> and for many of you artists. And on behalf of the Chamber, welcome. Thank you for the incredible contribution that you're making to our downtown community. We look forward to future endeavors and working together collaboratively uh, to see your dream truly fulfilled. Thank you so much. Very yes. good. We celebrated the opening of Outer Space. We called it the launch of Outer Space um, with a ribbon cutting with the Winter Haven Chamber of Commerce. And um, by the end of the night, it was extremely successful, and we're, we're extremely thankful and blessed that we had such a good reception. Um, by the end of the night, we had about 187 people that we know signed in. We have no idea how many came that we didn't. I know that we were putting refreshments away, and people were still coming in the back door. I was a little overwhelmed. I didn't expect the response that we got. It, it was just mind-blowing to me, because there were so many people that were here to support the cause and see the gallery, and um, just better than I could have ever dreamed of. It was, it was a great night. That is exactly what we want to see happen here at Outer Space. This space was created for artists and those that love art, period. So, you know, when you walk in the door, if what you don't want to do is the very cool, fun, and funky gallery that's up front, if you don't want to check out the intern space for Polk State College, you can just hang out in the back and watch the artists create their work. And that was the idea, was to create a space where anyone can enjoy the art regardless of where they want to fit into that. This space is a non-membership space. It is, we are wide open to the artist of our community. And the entire reason for that kind of inclusiveness is to further the arts. Also, to take some of these artists and put them in positions of giving back through their arts in some of our youth outreach programs, such as the Eloise program or the Bartow program or the program that we're doing in Highland City. Um, we, we have volunteer artists that come out and work through those programs that give of their time to teach children who really can't afford to take an art class um, how to do it, how to do it, get them excited. You know, we want our kids that are on the streets, we want our kids that are in these community centers to want to go to Polk State College to learn the arts. That's what our desire is, is to continue through the education process of, of mentoring and leading artists um, into the next possibility for themselves and then for our little guys that are coming up that are fine with crayons but would be brilliant with acrylics. I really hope that it becomes a, a really well-established gallery for Central Florida. I would love to see it draw people from Orlando and Tampa and, and outside of Polk County to, to come in and view the artwork. Uh, I think Polk County needs that outlet for, for the artist. Whether they're, they're coming to look at the artwork in the gallery or they're coming for an event uh, that we'll eventually have, um, I think it'll just provide maybe um, just another new and different outlet for people to come and experience art and celebrate art. Um, and, you know, downtown Winter Haven, they, they have so many great local businesses and so many great venues already for art. Um, but perhaps this one will provide more of that art gallery setting. For more information on Outer Space, you can find their page or the Arts Ensemble page on Facebook.
Switching gears from a brand new opening to a reopening, we're heading out to Haines City to check out an art cafe that was saved by the community. Jackie's Art Cafe had been open for three years before it announced that it would soon be closing, but due to an overwhelming love for a place to enjoy food, friends, and art all in one place, the community pulled together to keep their doors open. They had a successful reopening to a full house in August. Featuring local musicians, art on every wall, and food from the kitchen, it's certainly good to have them back. Take a look at their reopening. Well, Jackie and I had been, uh, we've been friends a long time and we're both uh, artists, so to speak. She's a painter. I took some professional uh, art classes from Mr. Tom Freeman out of Lake Wales. He's a very um, wonderfully known artist. And he taught me how to paint Florida landscapes. And that was about uh, seven years ago, maybe. And I've been a newspaper photographer and uh, a sort of an art photographer for years. And we had been setting up at art shows around the, the state. Jackie and I were coming from an art show, passing through town, and I said, oh, I want you to see the shops upstairs. And we went upstairs and looked, and it was really cute, and we came downstairs to leave and walked past, and there was a for rent sign on this space. And we, we saw the, the brick wall and thought, well, that'll make a cute little art gallery, at which meant maybe we won't have to go all over the south setting up at art shows. What we rented a place and contacted, we know a whole bunch of artists, and uh, we repainted, spent uh, three months getting the place looking like an art gallery. It happened to have a little, a little uh, kitchen in the back, so uh, we decided to make a go of it. And it just had a mind of its own and took over, and, um, and this is where we are today. We opened our little restaurant, and we didn't have any customers, you know, we didn't have any customers. It gradually started to build. And I kept saying, oh, we ought to get some music, we ought to get some music. But all the old music musicians' phone numbers I had, it weren't any good anymore. They'd all moved away or got cell phones. So Jackie cut out a cardboard guitar and pasted it on the front window. About an hour later, a guy came in and said, do you all have music? And we said, no. He said, well, could I play? And he started calling his friends, and presto, it's turned into a music venue. And it's become a real popular place. You know, we've met a lot of artists that have come through here and uh, appreciate the fact that we're here. But also, they, they, they tell us sometimes people come and say, you know, I, I hadn't painted for a while, or, you know, I used to do that. Or So we've actually inspired people to get started again. So that's really, we treasure that, you know. It's just really cool when somebody starts again. And with this art group, too, we've... Um, there's been little sparks in people's lives. They come in and they get a lot of enjoyment out of, you know, getting involved in art. We've met so many neat musicians that just dropped by last week. I mean, this happens all the time, but last week these two young girls came in for lunch and heard about the place. And uh, our music at the time uh, offered them to come up because they had said that they were, you know, musicians. So they got up, and those, they were sisters. And one sat at the piano, and the other one sang. And we were just almost in tears. I mean, it was just wow. So we never know who comes through our doors. It's just, it's really cool. Really, really cool. <laughs> opened up and we like to give you know, local businesses uh, an opportunity to serve us and uh, we just enjoy it here it's a nice quaint little cafe that you can come and just relax we have a lot of friends come in and you know just sit and mingle it's what used to be in the old days where people walked in and you had the local cafe and everybody knew you and and you just you know fell at home and that's what you feel here. You feel at home when you come back several times.
We did. We have started an art art club group and of of interested people that just want to keep art in their lives. And so uh, we started a little group that meets once a month, and it's an Art Oasis. They they went into the uh, acrylics and the uh, pastels and the pens, colored pencils and the charcoal and and they taught how to do each of those and encouraged you to how to manipulate and use those to draw and, and to uh, create beautiful artwork. We get together and, and do something different every month. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. The art classes are just a, a lot of fun. There's no pressure. And you know, with art, it doesn't matter if you're really good because you can be an impressionist. It's what you see and what you feel. So you don't have to be good. I didn't think I could do any art when I took the class and I turned out being fairly good. So. You just have to go and experiment and feel the, the gifts you've been given. We had been open for three years and we had been uh, working tirelessly uh, every day, many, many, many hours, and uh, we just kind of hit a breaking point. And we were worn out, absolutely exhausted, and, I, and we both said the same thing, you know, we're not making enough money at this to kill ourselves, so let's just quit. So we had geared up to do that, and the weekend that we started to remove uh, our pictures and clean up and stuff like that, our landlord came in. And he said, uh, I think you're going to have to put it all back. And we looked at him kind of funny, and he says, well, somebody, I've been getting a lot of phone calls and contacts from people that said they don't want you to close. And some of the customers heard about it and uh, called the landlord, gave the landlord money to pay our rent for June and July. Oh, it made us cry. It still does. It was a really nice thing. It was like, oh my goodness, it was overwhelming. What a, what a gift and what a blessing. So we started right away putting the stuff back on the walls and cleaning. And, and so we decided um, to take the two months off and uh, kind of redo some things, repaint, and I made some tablecloths. And, you know, we got to do normal things as normal people do during their lives enjoy life and travel a little bit here and there and take our Sunday drives. This is all like, it's all like family, you know? The, we, we know these people, these people invite us to their homes. I was in the hospital and uh, I got a new hip in November and uh, I got as many get well cards as, as I did when I was in school, you know, in elementary school and you get sick and everybody gives you the get well cards. Our customer base is just, they become our friends, you know, it's just been such a beautiful thing getting to know people. So it was kind of hard to say, to come to the point to say goodbye and um, so we're, we're just really happy to be back and doing what we love. So. And it, it gives um, a variety, I mean you go into the same same old, same old in the other places, and it's like, oh, you don't meet anybody, you don't, I mean, you eat, go in, you eat, you leave. Here, it's more like going into somebody's house and enjoying yourself and talking and just having a nice time while you're eating. It's just different. You need to experience it. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing place, and we're just, we're just following along. It's got its own life. The cafe is only open for lunch, so be sure to catch them during their business hours throughout the week. For more information on their local musicians and their events, you can check them out on Facebook. That's all I have for this month, but be sure to keep experiencing art throughout Polk County, and tune in next time when we go out and about.